I actually wished I had a father like him. When I watched when I watched that movie, I wish to God my father put on an apron and washed the dishes once in a while and was nicer than me, but he didn't. But that character, played by his father, who was a beautiful, nice man who was trying to be nice to his son, produced the rebel. Remember the movie Rebel Without a Cause? The son rebelled against the weak father. I don't know. This has nothing to do with ISIS talking about female sex slaves or the organized invasion of Europe and America by refugees promulgated by none other than George Soros, who, in my opinion, is an international war criminal. And if I really could go into the details of what he's doing to the world, you will see that he's one of the most evil geniuses that has ever lived, who has nothing but malice in his heart, in my estimation. Now, I haven't gotten to what I really want to do today yet, and that is this. Oh, there's two things I want to do. Remember I did a uh, Savage newsletter the other day where I said minorities like Donald Trump, that you're all wrong about it? Remember I was the first to say that to you? that I was reading obscure polls that I thought were reliable, and I told you why Hispanics would vote for Trump and not for a mean old woman like Hillary. I said Hispanic, the Hispanic culture is a macho culture. Hispanic men do not want an old woman telling them what to do. They're not voting for Hillary. And maybe they wouldn't admit it to their friends, but they're going to vote for Trump if they vote at all. And I said, likewise, in the black community, I said African Americans are so used to being lied to they know that the Clintons are liars who did nothing for them. They know she, they can look at her and know who she is. And they say, you know what, Trump may not reflect what we want 100%, but at least the guy says it like it is. They will take a man who they disagree with who tells them what they think is what he really believes over a liar like Hillary. I said that the other day, and so guess what comes out today? Minorities line up behind dot, 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 Donald Trump. It's on World Net Daily, written by Bob Unruh. And they have new research that show exactly what I said. And it shows exactly what I said, that um, Trump is popular amongst minorities. So everything you're hearing from the mainstream, which I call the midstream media, because that's about what their value is to me, uh, is a lie. Virtually everything they say is a lie. Now, when I come back, the big show story today is one of my heroes, Jerry Lewis, slamming President Obama and praising Donald Trump right here on the Savage Nation. Oh, my God. Well, the topics are pretty awful. I mean, to be honest with you, it's easy to listen to uh, Roy Rogers singing Jingle Bells or something like that or watch a football game. But look, this is what I do for a living. I've got to look at the world's sickness. And as uh, a social scientist who's trying to heal the world, you can call me a talk show host. You can call me anything you want, an entertainer. It doesn't really matter what you call me. I have a huge audience. I have many successful books. The fact is, is that although I am showing you the sickness of the world, there's a reason for it, which is we're hoping for a cure. You can ignore a disease, and what happens? It gets worse. Or it burns itself out. With Obama, has it burned itself out? Has the illness of Obama's radicalism run its course? No, he's coming back for the kill. He's coming back to drive the sword right into the heart of the country. He's, he's saving it up for the last, the last go, around, go around. He's got the cape ready, got the tights on, got the sword under the cape. He's coming back for the final assault on America's values, principles, and history. So um, illnesses have to be looked at in order to... Under, you, first, you have to diagnose them correctly. Then you have to come up with a rational treatment. Now, it is true that most epidemics, if they remain, if they're untreated, burn themselves out. That's true epidemiologically, of which I'm an expert. Uh, however, we do like to stop epidemics before they reach that point, don't we? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders. 
language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. selling book government zero we are engaged in a religious war that went on in the past we had religious wars that went on for a couple of hundred years if you think this is going to end whether it's trump or someone else who finally steps up to the plate you're mistaken radical islam is now at war with the entire world that means christians jews muslims who are not compliant with their insanity uh, hindus buddhists atheists they're not going to change just because you wish for them to change. And if you see how deeply embedded radicalism in the Islamic community is embedded right now because of Obama, you'll realize how much work there is remaining to be done. This just came out minutes ago. Mosque linked to Muslim Brotherhood has received millions in federal grants. I said this can't be true. Mosque linked to Muslim Brotherhood in Kansas City with deep ties to the U.S. arm of the Muslim Brotherhood, has received millions of dollars in federal grants over the past several years. The Islamic Center of Greater Kansas City has received $2.7 million from the Department of Agriculture since 2010, a daily call or analysis has found. The money largely went to the mosques, mosque, mosques, Crescent Clinic, to provide services through the Women, Infant, and Children Nutrition Program known as WIC. The most recent federal payment in the amount of $327,000 was handed out on October 1. Property records show the mosque is owned by the North American Islamic Trust, which acts as a financial holding company for Islamic organizations. It offers Sharia-compliant financial products to Muslim investors operates Islamic schools and owns more than 300 other mosques mosques throughout the US now what does Sharia compliant financial product mean does that mean that the knife they used to cut off the hands of thieves is uh, spit upon by a holy man what do I mean by Sharia compliant financial product you have any idea how deeply we have been invaded under Hussein Obama do you have any idea what it's gonna take to rid ourselves of this disease? There are more stories, and one of them is more agitating than the other. And I realize the average person can only take so much. I get it. But if I can take it, you can take it. Here's another one out of Europe. Wave of refugees to Europe is called an organized invasion, not by a right-wing nut, but by the Czech prime minister. Czech President Milo Zeman has called the current wave of refugees to Europe, quote, an organized invasion saying that young men from Syria and Iraq should instead take up arms against the Islamic State of Iraq and Levant. Good for him. Good for him. Young men single and in good health. He says, I wonder why these men are not taking up arms to go fight for the freedom of their countries against the Islamic State. Hmm. I wonder what that's about. Well, he calls it an invasion. I guess he's now going to be called a Nazi by the progressives who work for George Soros' front companies. Phone number here is 855-407-282. This is Michael Savage, live from Beverly Thrills, California. And no, I told you I would report on Rodeo Drive today and who the number one uh, shoppers are, like what country. I did not go. I didn't go out there. So I couldn't go down there. I didn't want to look at the shoppers. I may get to it today. New Year's Eve is looming. Another black hole. I can't wait till that's over. Uh, thank God the holidays are almost over. I, I can't wait for them to be done. Back to normal. Don't tell me you're having a good time on vacation. I love it. Where are you on vacation? What are you doing? They can't wait to get back to work, most men. The guys who took off from radio, they're listening to me because they're, they're monitoring. They feel like they're falling behind. Their wives, the children. Yeah, yeah, we're with family the whole week. Yeah, can't wait. to. Yeah. They ran back to the house or the car somewhere to listen to the only one broadcasting today, me who's not on vacation, because I don't want to be on vacation. I have uh, home studios wherever I go on vacation, which is nowhere. I have a home studio now in Beverly Hills because I have family here. I'm probably going to spend a little time down here getting away from the sickness of San Francisco 
the illness, the illness, the illness. The illness is so overwhelming. The illness of progressivism is like a disease, a seeping, insane disease that gets worse by the day. But I love the city, and I love the mountains, and I love the bay. I love the birds, and I love the bees, and they're not going to drive me out. It's mine as much as theirs. 30% of the people who live in the Bay Area are conservatives, by the way, who have zero representation. And, you know, the same is true in many metropolitan areas that have been invaded by uh, uh, immigrants. 30% of the population, generally the hardest working, the tax-paying part of the population, hate the governments that have taken over these cities, hate them, and they have zero representation. I wouldn't mind if there was a progressive element of a government, but there's no other element of governments in San Francisco or New York uh, uh, City or so many other liberal bastions of insanity where welfare states are growing like cancer. You look at Hawaii. Let's take a look at Hawaii, for example, to show you how sick a place can get. The birthplace of our dear president. There was a governor, Neil Abercrombie. He was as liberal as they come, a friend of Obama, progressive his whole life, played the union card very well became governor, and then he made a mistake. He was running for governor again, and he dared say to the unions, you have to rein in your pensions because we can't afford it. They destroyed him. They destroyed him. The unions are controlling the state of Hawaii. The unions control the state of California. That's how a man as crazy as Jerry Brown, as incompetent as Jerry Brown, could become governor again because the unions wanted a stooge in Sacramento who does nothing to control their pensions and their demands. So you say, how does this end? I don't know how it ends. You run out of other people's money, I suppose. You keep printing it and stealing it from the hardworking people until eventually there's no one left to rob from. I don't know. I don't know how it ends. So there were a lot of problems, and I don't know that they're all soluble. I really don't. And I think, therefore, that is why I focus on, to me, if you take all the problems that are facing America, you can't deal with all of them. You can go crazy from it. So what you have to do is focus on the most important. And to me, that's national security. Obama gets less than zero on national security. He has failed us utterly. He has decimated the military. Read Government Zero. I document it. I name the officers who he fired, who he drove out of the military. I go through every department in this country in Government Zero. I don't expect the book suddenly to become a raging bestseller again because I mentioned it. There is no better documentation for what Obama has done to this country than my masterpiece, Government Zero. None. The book is a classic of information with references to every statement. For whatever it's worth, if you really want to know what he's done and what he's doing and what he might do before he's out of office, if he ever does leave office, a big question mark, um, you can check it out in Government Zero. So the number one issue is national security. He did nothing against the Islamic State until Russia finally showed him up for what he really was, and now all of a sudden he's Mr. Mr. You know, Commander-in-Chief. So we open the show today talking about the despicable, the despicable rules uh, that ISIS put out on how to treat slaves, sex slaves, a rape handbook. Not one word from any of the fraudulent women's groups in America. You know, you know if you listen to the show long enough that I'm a sexual libertarian. I've said that for 10 years because it's true. I don't care what people do with each other as long as it's consensual, sexually now, and there are no children involved. In that sense, I'm a sexual libertarian. It's not for me to judge you, and you're not to judge me. However, I don't understand how gay women, or lesbians if you want to put it, I don't know what the, the proper term is, are not up in arms screaming about the rape handbook. I don't know how they cannot go crazy over this. I guess I, I just ask for too much from people. Where are the advocates for these poor women being raped to death in the Middle East? Certainly not to be found in America. Then we had the story of the black so-called professor of uh, philosophy here who says that white Americans should admit to the racist poison inside of you. Uh, let, let's not go there again. This is a result of affirmative action why you'd even have to hear a thing like this. And we didn't get yet to Jerry Lewis, who's one of my heroes. I remember since I'm a little boy, I loved his work. As a comedian now, I didn't know he was a philosopher. I never thought of Jerry Lewis as a philosopher, but you think anyone is that smart. You don't know this about Jerry Lewis. I've studied him because he's such a great comedian. I once read a biography uh, of him. 
You know that this guy was so smart that he 